from serving our country overseas to the Minnesota House of Representatives. Our next guest continues to inspire as a motivational speaker and also an advocate of military veterans. Yeah, in the newly released updated edition of his book, Still Standing, readers follow a journey from certain death to a second chance at life. Some would say a second and a third and a fourth. <laughs> oh, what was going on in the book? Joining us this morning is co-author John Friesel. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's been 12 years uh, since you were wounded uh, and eight years since your first edition of Still Standing came out. We'll show this in just a second. Uh, why, f number one, I guess, why tell your story in the first place? What makes you so special? Uh, There's many days that I looked at my life and was like, did this really happen to me? Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like, obviously, I wish it didn't happen but I feel thankful for the lessons that I've learned having gone through it. And if I can inspire others by teaching them the lessons that I've learned, then that, that's my goal. Well, tell us what happened. Yeah, in a, in a nutshell. Sure, <laughs> I was uh, wounded in a 200 pound improvised explosive device in 2006 in Iraq. I lost two of my best friends. Um, both of my legs were amputated. Two of my other buddies were severely wounded as well. I wasn't expected to survive. And so when I woke up eight days later at Walter Reed, and realized that I had this new battle ahead of me, I quickly learned that it would be disrespectful of me to feel sorry for myself. I got a second chance at life that my friends didn't get, and so since then I've tried to make every day the best that I could. Uh, the rehabilitation for your body, uh, I'm sure that was, the task was e enormous, but also, you know, your mind, in going through an ordeal like that, uh, what, where did you draw from as far as strength? Because, you know, some people think, how could you possibly even, you know, go one more day knowing what you've seen? Sure. Um, I, I will never forget the moment of laying on the ground after the blast, after the bomb went off, seeing my legs, seeing my injuries, hearing my blood going into the sand. I thought, I'm going to die. So when I woke up at Walter Reed after having been saved by my friends and by doctors, I was so thankful to be alive that I was like, I'm going... It, Anything from here forward is a bonus. And I worked my tail off to try and get back home to Minnesota. And in turn, you worked with uh, author John Cosmo, right? Jim Cosmo. Jim yep. Cosmo. Yep. And uh, to, to tell the story, because ultimately you decided this, this needed to be shared, and it, it kind of moved you in the direction of, of motivational speaker, out of public service, and of getting out into the world and kind of proselytizing your event. Right. It, and when we decided to write the book, to answer your first question, mm -hmm. was I, I didn't want to just tell what happened to me. We had to have a message. And what we decided was it was not that this is going to happen to anybody else reading the book, because mm -hmm. it's not. But we're all going to face adversity at some point in our lives. And it doesn't matter how big or how small that adversity we face is. It's the attitude that we bring to the table that will help us get through it. Mm -hmm. And that's really the theme of the book. is isn't a war story. It's a story of falling back in love with your life after an incident, after a tragedy, mm -hmm. and realizing that we're all blessed. You were a member of the House of Representatives, so how long were you in that job, and, and what was that experience like for you? I served one term, and then I decided to call it quits, didn't want to run for re-election. It was awesome. I think it made me a better person because I learned to look at the other side of the issue. Uh, before that, it was only what was important to me, what I saw in the news, and I'd have my own thoughts. But when I was elected, I had to represent everybody, the ones who voted for me, the ones who voted for my opponent. And it really forced me to look at every issue from multiple angles. And uh, I, I just think overall it, it made me, it gave me perspective. Do you think you'll ever run again? I don't know. I probably not because I'm happier now than I've ever been. So <laughs> why, why mess with it? But I'll never rule it out for sure. Uh, it's been eight years uh, since the uh, book was originally published. Um, what type of updating and revision did you do? Did you just did you add on to your life? Did you go back and make any changes to how things were originally presented? We added a bunch of new pictures, mm -hmm. and uh, that I like pictures. Mm -hmm. Any book that I would write would have to have a bunch of pictures in it. Uh, <laughs> we added my dad's perspective for the because it's first person present tense. When I'm in the coma, all I of a sudden, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I, then all of a sudden the the voice, the narrator's voice is gone. Mm -hmm. So it's my, it's always been my buddies that were there on the ground when it happened, but mm -hmm. this time we added my dad's perspective from when they got the phone call from the army saying, I'd been seriously injured and I may not survive. And then his journey to Germany to be by my side, sort of from that perspective as a parent. And right. then um, we added obviously the past eight years of my life to sum it up. When we first wrote it, I felt like I was on the top of the mountain 
and I had figured life out, mm -hmm. but I, I had a lot of growing to do in the past eight years, and I feel like the new version reflects that. All right, we have the release party uh, coming up, and that is... Tomorrow. When? Tomorrow? From 6 to 9 p.m. at Summit Brewing Company. And if people buy a beer or a, brook, a book, I will buy them a beer. Oh, very nice. Well, how about that? <laughs> That's a great <laughs> book release party. John, thank you so much for coming thank in today. You talking about your new book. Uh, it's available in bookstores and online retailers. And you, you said you can meet John tomorrow night at the release party at Summit Brewing Company in St. Paul. Buy a book, you'll buy a beer. For more information, visit stillstandingstory.com.